All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Call of Duty League for the final matchup of the day. This matchup is going to be a banger. It's going to be between two teams that really need this win. The New York Subliners and also the Minnesota Rockers. The NYSL match to end the group play of the Stage 2 was everything. If we won that, we started winners. We lost it, you started losers. Seeing the Minnesota Rocker here in Stage 2, it's kind of been up and down right now, but I'm looking for a positive sign of consistency. The players on this roster are so good, and if they're really able to capitalize on the win against a team like the New York Subliners, that will make people like me really believe that they're exactly where they need to be. Bomb's gonna be planted quick. Stanley's in a position to spring into action, but will he spring? Yes, he will. There's the kill now. Is this the 3v3? Well, there you go. Trades are instant. Someone's to that back tank, though. So Crim6 is having himself a, a nice little fight, or maybe Hydra can just play spoiler. He's able to get up top, and funnel enough, the Tatch dips out at that exact moment. But guess who gets shot in the back and the front? The Swarm is in. Major Maniac lasts alive for the 1v3, but as clutch as he can be, Subliners have just had their number, and there it is. 2-0 for New York. The Bokaj, they take him down both times. We put ourselves in good positions round after round after round. We got 2v4 three times and uh, 3v4 like one time. If we just cleaned up our mid-rounds uh, in that map, we should win it with ease, and then we're in a position to go up 2-1 with the control, which we ended up winning. I don't even want to talk about the NYSL match. The NYSL match was obviously extremely important because we win that, we're in winner's bracket, right? But there's still the Toronto match we lost, the Boston match that we lost, two two series that I mean I, I went into very confident. We win that Gavitu Hardpoint versus Toronto, we probably win that series, and then now we're three and two, and, and even if we lost to New York, so there's other series too that we had great moments in and just didn't capitalize on. I let everyone know after major one, like what needs to be done. I don't want to go to that Minnesota, our home major, where I know it's going to be a sea of purple and so many people supporting us and just bomb out. Um, so I was like trying to be motivational, build a sense of urgency in the team and just wanting to be like focused and hungry because I wanted to perform. You definitely never anticipate a slow start. Stage one was tough. It just came down to that Seattle match, really, because if we do win that and close that out, we start in winners. That was a real tough loss. After stage one, we placed top eight, losing out to LA Thieves, and which felt like it could have been an extended series taking them to game five, but came up short. So right after that, we had about a week until we played Ultra. We discussed the roll saw probably instantly. So after major one, uh, our team was bullied by the community into swapping roles because I uh, went off a little too hard using the assault rifle, the auto. Me and Dylan can kind of flex back and forth. So depending on the game, I feel like we're able to like kind of bounce back and forth between an AR and a sub and just kind of figure out what works for us as a team and a unit. That kind of change is not that big in my eyes considering Preston has already ran a sub in the past. He's, he's a flex, so he can run both an AR or a sub really well. And I think him switching to a sub was actually a great decision. After that like first week of trying to change, uh, things just really started turning around in practice. We would have a bad scrim every now and then, but for the most part, we were really consistent week after week with all our hard point win rates kind of floating around the 50 to 60% mark. What time is it today? I think it's like 11... 20. It's like 12, almost. Thursday. So, you know, not much for us to do today as we're uh, horrible and in loser's bracket. So, we're just warming up the good teams today. Flying to an event in loser's bracket definitely sucks too. I ain't trying to do that shit ever again. I never want to start in losers again. I didn't want to start in losers this event either. I mean, it's definitely a, a feeling of just... Nah, it's not good. It's not a good feeling. Oh yeah, you go into a little more detail than that. Yeah. You can't win a game one. Do you want me to take it or you want my team? Like, take me away. away. We don't play today, so it kind of sucks because you're in this environment. You want to get that feeling that you're playing today, but we're just trying to stay warm, stay active, and then tomorrow we're last match, so. It has its pros and cons to waiting throughout the day, but when is your moment, you just gotta be ready because you don't want to get to the match and then flop. You're just thinking good thoughts. But yeah, it's just it's a lot of waiting, but you gotta be right. You gotta be ready for the moment. 
The problem, the problem with you just hitting it is and you're just going into a crossfire when that guy's on hill. Like, he just turns, and you have someone top radio or flat, like, you're just running into two people every single time like that. Oh, already the first 3 0 with attorney. Things are heating up right now. Tournament started. Florida's upset in London. Mom, can you take this picture? Yeah, I think, it's, I think it looks better like this. There we go. Nice meeting you. I'll see you. Of course. Who, whose idea was this? Having my mom at the events is always awesome. Uh, I mean, she was taking me to the local lands before, way before I went pro in the early days. So I made her sit in the car though. She wasn't allowed to come in. She's been supporting me for as long as I can remember. She's part of the journey and one of the only reasons that I'm here still today. So it's uh, always awesome to see her there. And now she's a celebrity at these events. After matches or whatever, she'll come up to me. She's like, there's like three people you gotta take a pictures with. They want signatures, they want this and everything. So she's like kind of my, I guess, manager in a sense. She's also Probably a lot more liked than I am. That's pretty cool. Isn't that cool? Yeah. yeah. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Love that one. <laughs> this brick chicken, though. I'm sure they got many over there. You don't get them kids' chicken fingers. You actually get them. You don't get them chicken fingers. I don't know. I would imagine. <laughs> Alex is fucking awesome, honestly. He's a cool ass dude. He does all of our statistics, data. He does a lot that people don't really see. He's very vocal on the team, to be honest. I feel like last year he's a little bit shy, not a lot of people knew about him, but this year he's much more vocal. And having him on board, having him at the event was awesome. I think everyone there was happy to have him, and uh, shout out Alex. You know, like, gonna make funny faces? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Other than that, you're good? You don't need anything else? You want me to try this espresso? I didn't give a review. Okay, yeah, oh, email me honest review. Okay. Oh, it's okay. nice. I like to try some of this espresso. It's on the camera a little bit. It's like drink espresso though, like you, yeah. you drink it really soon. If you want to taste like something that just tastes really bad, I'd probably drink this. See, when you drink something like this, you drink it for the way it makes you feel, not for the taste. If you drink this for the taste, you're probably a psychopath. Paris Legion. Okay, if they're down, I'm trying to play like like two S and D's versus them too. You guys gonna try and get some reps in and clean that up? Yeah, if they're down. Cause then when we could like actually talk about it and then tonight we can just like, all right, so this worked, this didn't, like let's try this, you know? Yeah. Actually have like a kind of a plan for tomorrow cause we're yeah, nasty at S and D. We're nasty at S and D, but there's four maps and two of the maps changed. So, but that was because we also had like a good game plan and understand the map, like the timings really well. We're coming out slow in every series, especially the game one, I think we're 0 and 10 in online matches in game one, 0 and 10. When you're on the back foot every series, like, you have to play perfect s &D, opposed to where if we come out with that game one win, we can play so loose, um, aggressive, and just kind of like freestyle our s and Ds, but um, so it's really like that game one momentum is really important. You're the guy for s and are you not? So like, yeah. when you guys constantly go down on one, do you feel like that puts even more pressure on you. Like you said earlier, you gotta play these S and Ds perfectly. And you, yeah. And you already know that the other teams up on one, they're gonna be playing fast. Yeah, they're gonna be playing loose. Like they're gonna play because I mean they also realize we're a great a good S and D team, right? So they're gonna come out playing loose, playing confident. And if they lose the map, they lose the map because maybe they're already expecting to. But if they win the map, that's obviously great for them. I don't think it really puts to like like any extra pressure on me. I think it's more so like, I just don't wanna be in that situation. Like I'm okay with it. Like I'm comfortable in that environment to do so. Like the, the reverse sweep, like grand finals, there's four S and D's in a grand finals. And if I'm in a grand finals, I'm in love with that shit. Four S and D's out of nine. If you're not a good S and D team, you're not winning the finals. Well, I think what Brian made a good point is like the routine that goes into how we prepare for our matches. So like everybody doing our like focus comms, just kind of visualizing how we're gonna like start off on the map, how we're gonna break, how we're gonna hold, just having that conversation um, before the map even starts. And just kind of getting in that calm, but alert mindset. So I think that's where it starts, obviously screaming. Yeah, we gotta forward. do this. We gotta do squats, three stretches, four second breath. Four second hold. Four second exhale. Four second exhale. 
And then maybe push-ups and stump stuff. Rocker and uh, V1, they're just a great organization. So they provide us with tons of things like personal training in the weight room, a mental health coach with like uh, Adamus, where he's just kind of helping us with everything. Talking about the uh, pressures in game, out of game. We have these things called focus comms. They're like bands that go over your head and it kind of like helps you breathe, like meditate. All the like out of game stuff, the way that I view it is you're kind of, you're trying to find like your zen. For example, like an avatar, he has to master all the bending. Like you're kind of, you're trying to find like your inner like focus, not letting the outside world bother you. Just kind of lock in and find your zone. And I think doing stuff like focus calm, doing exercises, getting your mind moving. It's all to kind of find that feeling of when you're in your zone. It helps. Yeah, I I think like the last week I was trying out this dietary supplement. It's like this thing that's supposed to like help improve like mind focus, blah blah. And I was like, I was really interested in it. I kind of wanted to try it. And uh, I think with caffeine, stress, and then that, the combination just kind of gave me hives. And it started out with a small itch on like my arm. So I started itching a little bit. It was a weird feeling. It's like you're hot, but you're cold at the same time. And I started itching my body getting really itchy, kind of fucked up practice a little bit. It was getting really bad on me, so then we had to call the doctors and see what's up, and they just kind of told me that's an allergic reaction. And I mean, for me, I really, I hated it to be honest. Like I wish I could have been locked in the full time and I tried really hard to be. That kind of stuff, it's tough, but I mean, it builds better, better character, better mental fortitude. And uh, I mean, I'm sure I'll look back on it and be like, hey, that's a funny story to tell one day. I wasn't really concerned about the game at the time. I was just like making sure everything is okay with him and then we can worry about that later, you know? Oh, he's recording me with that. <laughs> Take a bad I mean, we can watch the mod with like out him tonight, but. Yeah, we're still gonna do the normal stuff. That makes if he so can be there, weird. great. If he can't, I mean, he can't. I'll just say, with how late we play tomorrow, like we can also wave him and do it in the afternoon as well. Nah, no one wants to do it. In the, no one wants to do it during the day. Before I'm going to sleep, I'm like, it's like, literally it's scientifically proven. If you go over stuff I'm, at night, I'm you figure stuff out like at night. Set, you you know, like, I'm like, okay, we're about to be playing like Berlin hard point, yeah. Tuscan hard point. It's part of your routine, right? Yeah. Then you feel so unprepared when you're going to sleep. You're like, I'm like stressed when I go to sleep. And yeah, because like you're thinking about like, I'm like, okay, what's the scenarios like? Well, instead of like having like a scenario that's more than likely probably Ray. You yeah. Know? We gotta get lit up! Don't you think you guys are excited about coming back to Minnesota after the launch of it? This is it! This is Call of Duty! Day two of uh, the Minnesota Rocket Major hosted by us. And uh, we're going up against Optic Texas at 6.30 Central. So I'm just chilling right now, waiting until we get warmed up soon when all the other boys come here. But yeah, I'm excited. Oh, no. man, kill him today. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's probably, there's like a little bit, but like, look, it's way better. It's like gone. It's like basically gone. Whatever medicine this is. Whatever, just take it. Yeah. My brother just gave it to me. I'm only gonna take one. John's taking her out. John's taking her out. John's mind number two. Can he get with us? 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 Gravity makes something happen here. Jimbo finds two. Can Jimbo find a third? Gravity picks up one. Oh, they know there's fighting middle left. They can win off this hill right here. Oh! 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 Um, both kids last two weeks were three and seven on P2 side, and on grandma's side, we're six and two. So, what side do you want to start on if we get both? Grandma's side, because you're six and two. For any S and Ds, would you guys want to start offense opposed to defense? Um, the option would be Berlin, Bokic, Siege, probably defense on all, except for maybe Berlin. Here you go, Mike. Defense on all. Maybe Tom's in the group. 
What side did you pick for Berlin? Uh, hard point? P3 side. P3 side. Uh, we'll go blue. I'm Tuscan. Good luck. Jab, yeah, um, Siege, Tuscan, Berlin, Berlin. Yeah. Okay. Yo, can you end this and put it on hardpoint real quick? Hardpoint Gab? Because the right. Spaniards told me that knife out makes it so you don't get naded on Gab. Because it gives you that extra sprint. When I was watching the Spaniards, every single time, every FK on P1, they would, they would break off with knife. Or like every break off. They're just saying off like, like you beat their nades? Yeah. yeah. Well, on like any map, they break off with knife. Mm -hmm. It gives you run faster. Yeah. You run faster with pistol, though, right? But you just don't run as long. Yeah, it's just the yeah. long part. That's I remember we beat. tested that a while. Yeah. I knew it was going to be crazy when we first walked out and I knew we were going to get a little applause and stuff, everyone's going to cheer, but I was not expecting what happened. A couple Optic players walked out to just go set up and they were getting booed and I was like, is Optic Gaming getting booed at a Call of Duty event? This is not real. Ladies and gentlemen, it's about that time. This is what we have all been waiting for. The hometown heroes, here they come, the Minnesota Take the stage! Standy, attach, Major Maniac, and Priesta! You can see the smiles across their faces. This crowd is lighting them up for a match that they desperately need to win. I was just smiling. Like, I, honestly, I wasn't really saying much. I was just smiling because, like, that was the craziest amount of support I've seen in, like, a intro walkout in my entire time competing. stage was shaking, it was rumbling. Eli's like, man, like, what's going on? Like, why is the stage shaking? But it was just Jake jumping behind him on the stage. <laughs> it felt like wobbly, like we were about to fall in, the stage is gonna collapse in. <laughs> well, I heard it was just Jake jumping behind you. Yeah, it was. It was just Jake just jumping, and I was just like, oh, big man. If the comms good, let's come out, make a statement. Yeah, Shut them right here. Yeah, going into map one, a hard point of voodoo, I think many pros would agree is one of the more basic hard points and how to play it. I mean, before map one, I just told the team that our name tracking has to be on point, making sure that we're accounting every player in their position. You know, the only way they're really gonna beat us is if Shotzi's hitting a route. If Shotzi's hitting a route on that map, it's the only way they're ever flipping spawn. Well, let's get it going, baby. Map one, hard point, Rocker, Texas. We kick it off on Gavutu. Map for Minnesota, Rocker. They just gotta get there. The crowd behind them, a nice lead. This man, I talked about it on the pre-show. He loves playing Optic, and there you can see the three-piece coming in. It's gone, Optic, we're in control. I mean, he even hits the stun to get the implement oh, back in. Oh, and now the movement on point for him. Nobody yeah, looked yeah, for him. Yeah. You heard Major say, I need he's behind this green now. Shotzi is putting on a montage place, and the shot has been there. Shotzi just wants to send it. The hit fire hits. What not is going the number. on? We know that if we do win the map one hard point, we're gonna win the series. But we know if we lose the map one hard point, we're still in the series. So it's kind of just like, damn. That extra boost, probably, we probably would have liked that. So it was just another one of those days where it's like, okay, well, lost the game one, added onto the list. But here's where it gets interesting. Rocker, zero and zero on Desert Siege. Have not played it all year. The two stinky. He's in the corner, he's able to take it. Major will follow it up. That's a four on two advantage early. Priest a surprise though. Illy holding on the bomb for the trade there for Major. And I like this round number one. Ooh. Dash is gonna make this into a 1v2. All right, now he recognizes that they yeah. might be isolated. But the crossfire comes in. They're gonna have a one on one on the other side. Is that Scump start to push through? Major Maniac is just ready and waiting. Scump, we shall see you in the next round. Round to Rocker. One round away from tying it up 1 1. Here we go. He's gonna get taken down. No, one versus two for Dashi. Ah, oh, Priest up coming up big. Press the key. Nine! Here we go, baby! Come on! It's 
I got this. Yo, yo, my dad, I got that fuse, bro. Holy shit. Yo, you're I was so one shot, and we are all tied up. Yeah, so between the game two and the game three, we're going in Tuscan control, which is the map we have an incredible amount of confidence in right now. Routinely play it extremely well every single day in practice, but we do know how control can get in matches sometimes where it can just be really, really defensive heavy, where teams just trade rounds back and forth. Guys, bro, his favorite play. When, if he gets into our church, his favorite place to go to the arch or when he camps back to Like if he get like on his offense, yeah, if he yeah. gets killed and he's trying to spawn, his favorite he's play like is going to the arch, arch and like arch corner, yeah. trying to get back a kill or back door. So as a former pro player and coming into uh, coaching, I always used to look at like players' tendencies. That's kind of what I try to advise the players before like a, a map, Shotzi's routes and when he gets into your church on offense and things like that, there's select spots he likes to play. Just knowing that he's gonna catch someone sprinting off a of spawn. But the bolt got really, but we swap right over to attach and he's keeping a roll and that's six straight now as he works closer to the glide to the cross. And now as he works the play, there's the freebie. Nice. I, 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 I got a bomb with I still have a bomb. Yeah, but Bishop. Yeah, you still have the glide. Now, where do you ramp this up from? We're going to lose somebody and get staggered here a bit, but Stanny able to win a big one. It's now another chance. They're just sliding across. The Nades are going to connect. Illy's shots going to put him down as well. Scump and Illy just working together on the crossfire. And Dashi wants involved as well. Now, hold in A. You have just enough to get the kills over towards B. This could be one huge. Was a centimeter for being a third point of progress in the added minute with A. They have not been able to touch again. Rocker had just locked it down. So he might push back to the same spot now. They're going to call it in. This will be the glide. Sees him then the back. That's going to be scuffed down. Another drops in Illy at the same time. They have a couple more lining up, but Shotzi and Dashi trying to go big, and they're going to do just that. But now it's round five. Do or die time within this map three. It's offense for Rocker. And with 10 seconds, I'm not sure you can get there. They're trying desperately. But once again, the defense simply too strong. Or is it? You got one moment. Only three lives remaining. But the grenade over the top, that'll seal the deal. Optics defense so, so good. Well, the first glide bomb, I felt like was a great opportunity for us to set up. Um, Dill called in his glide. I was waiting in the back. He pops the glide, so I know the guy in the back is gonna move to like a safer spot, arches, um, to like try to dodge it or maybe go bottom church. And as soon as the glide pops up, I chow that knowing he's gonna move. So I win my one-on-one -on -one versus Illy before the glide even comes down and gets the kill. So it's still flowing down. So I know we're about to get two kills because Dill's gonna guarantee one with the glide, right? He drops it, we're doubled in green where they're obviously gonna go because they're hiding from the glide bomb and we get two piece in there. I'm now alone in the back and then Dill jumps up top and, and also dies. Map four time now to Berlin. We go to Standy's POV. Let's get rid of all these windows so that I can see through them. But the information is there, the snapback is on, the headshot is through. Screw that ceiling. Oh, in his face. Oh, okay. You got to think, Optic. They can smell it now. They're blowing them out. Up 70, just dominating. Shotzi with streaks right in. How big a break can be here. You trail by 40. Can you find an opening just waiting on who's going to be the person to go? They find an entry with the nade. Attach able to get what is well. That's going to be three down. Now you got to fly in. Great territory. This scary hour. They need to do something to freeze them. Be the hero they need to find an opening into this point. He's able to take the first, take down the second. Trying to cook oh, the man, doing it all. Throw a little teardrop, but the help is through. And Stady's able to find one. You need this time. You need it desperately. Nobody close enough. Optic Texas regain. And they continue on here in Minnesota. I mean, it doesn't feel like we let the orgs, the fans, the supporters, uh, friends, family, everyone that came out here for this event down, we did let them down. Um, that's just how it goes. You gotta be honest with yourself. We've been playing poor Call of Duty the whole year. We need to get stuff fixed soon because we're actually in danger to not make champs now. Shotzi, we, Mike spawned in the back. And then like, we just did, we, we thought we were all good, but like realistically, like that was the only thing you should watch anyway. So you, could, you probably just would have won the gunfight. No, uh, yeah, I definitely would have. I was just like, I just knew like, my teammate died top boat, so I was like, yo, they're gonna just try to challenge me. I'm gonna get one kill, stay down, and then I'm now I'm one off streets. But I didn't think this guy was behind us because I was literally ring initially 
stayed there the whole time. Spawn killed Seth, had my scoreboard up, so this guy didn't spawn behind me. So I was f***ing convinced nobody got behind me, bro. I think the one thing that kind of frustrated me was we swapped roles, but we only got one like one series on land with that role. I feel like it's a lot different compared to online to land. So for me, I'm like, Damn, I got to run a sub one time, like in one series so far. So I was like, I, I was just bummed, man. I just wanted to be able to play more series. It just sucks that they killed me right here. Like, f***ing Shotzi saw me cross and this, or someone saw me cross after me. I mean, no, like the way I see it is it's like, Dill makes a f***ing godlike play. We, re we break the hill yeah, just, when they had control so. of it. And then like I'm like okay we just got we just got all the kills like I'm gonna take my timing to get to P5 thinking you guys are gonna come on spawn and just reinforce the hill. After major two and leading up to major three, we do have like a six seven week break, which is uh, pretty crazy. But I think it's perfect timing because we have to figure out what's going wrong with our system, what's going on with all the players individually, and when we come together as a team, like what we need to address and fix and just get ready for it. Um, it's hard to say. I don't know the future yet. We're not gonna give up. You just saw LAG with a weak fill-in win the event. Right now, we're kind of just gonna take a week off, figure out what the best route for us is, but. After that, we're just going to be getting back on the grind. We have a lot of time to practice, and hopefully we can find some good form going into the pro -M event. If we do well there, it'll set the tempo going into stage three. And if we don't do well there, then, you know, we can kind of figure out what's going wrong from that point, and then once again, you know, try and find a solution. And if we don't do well at the pro -M, it'll be a really good tell of if we're doing the right thing or not in terms of the team. I have a feeling this next stage, I'm going to come out and I'm gonna be fucking disgusting. You gotta love and enjoy what you're doing, and I think that's like the main key, and then also like, just find that inner fire for yourself, find it for the team, let your team on fire, and I wanna be that guy for the team, so. Do you love and enjoy it right now? Uh, I love and enjoy it, honestly. Like, I'm always gonna have an undying love for COD, but I mean, losing obviously sucks, but I still wanna win. I'm still determined, so it's not gonna stop me. All I will say is the next few weeks I think will be very interesting.